know why I sung that one. Hi guys, welcome back to Shelby on Safari. We are on our third, one, two, three, part of our Animal Crossing in real life event, live stream. I, of course, am Shelby, at least I hope so. Um, depends who's asking. And tonight we will be covering some really cool bugs that you can catch in Animal Crossing's New Horizons. I am a wild animal biologist that just happens to also love pop culture, and thus this channel was born, where I look at Pokemon, DC, and Marvel superheroes, as well as showcase some animals that you may not have heard of, with ultimately the goal to inspire you to stay curious and keep learning with me, because I love doing the research and finding out lots of cool information about a variety of different animals, which I'm pleased to say tonight, with bugs in the spotlight, it was a lot of fun to look at some creatures that I've been catching in Animal Crossing's New Horizons. Since I got it as a Christmas gift back uh, just a few weeks ago, I've been playing quite frequently. And with the help from a lot of you guys, actually, I have had a rather prosperous experience growing the island, bringing in new neighbors, having a lot of cool surfboards. Shout out to Chaz, who gave me his, his island tour the other night, and I saw a surfboard on his island, that was literally my dream surfboard to have in real life, and I lost my mind. Um, and he was kind enough to send one to me, so thanks, Chaz. So first, before we go into all of this, just a preface as to what to expect in tonight's live stream. In case you haven't joined us before, I did one on the fish that you can catch and the sea creatures. I'll pop those in the link in the description down below to check out the playlist. But what I thought we'd do is first cover how to catch bugs, because... Well, as a new player myself, I had to get used to the ropes, per se, and learn how to use the net, how to sneak up, and I'm still not quite at catching the bagworm, but that's a sore topic because I can't find one. Uh, however, after covering just how to catch bugs in general on Animal Crossings, we'll look into what bugs you can catch in January. Now, the great thing about this game is that it's separated into both the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, which is nice because it makes it more seasonal. So there are certain bugs that you can't catch here up in the Northern Hemisphere that my friends down in Australia like cricket can. But alas, hopefully the summer will return here to the UK and it'll get warmer and I'll be able to catch a lot more bugs because it turns out there's plenty more to catch in the summertime. Then last but not least, we will cover three, no, five cool bugs, I can count, five cool bugs that you can catch, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere, with some interesting facts, some new studies, and even some folklore. That's right, friends. Not only do I love to look at the science aspect of things, but one of my favorite, favorite things is regarding folklore. I did a whole series on Halloween looking at kind of the myths and superstitions of spooky animals, and that was so much fun. Not too much science, but just enough to <laughs> let me get away with it, but more folklore base. And look who decided to show back up. Hello, Starkey. Just before we started, she was trying to get out, because I'll be honest, I did steal her seat. We got this new snazzy seat, thanks to Katie and Mark. And uh, yeah, it's been the cat seat, not my seat. And she was in it, and I had to pop her up and move her aside. Now she's, where are you? back there oh yeah my sun beetles are back there they'll pop up later i did do a video on them a uh, long time ago in fact it's rather embarrassing it's one of my earlier videos so don't judge too harshly friends speaking of which my goodness gracious 300 subscribers thank you guys i think i'm just over the limit now uh over 300 but gee golly what a journey it has been over these past few months. And I wanna thank you all so much for joining the safari with me as we continue to learn, stay curious and just have fun and play some cool games and meet some cool animals. So thank you so much. I had no idea that it would ever become like this. I was just planning on making videos because I like making videos and doing research, like playing Animal Crossing, which involves catching bugs. So let's get started into part one of the live stream, the art of catching bugs. It involves a net. Now, of course, as you know, you've got to craft these nets, but it's not just making a net. Oh no, you got to sneak up on a lot of these bugs, it turns out, because some of them will fly away, like the dung beetle, which we'll see, you know, if you haven't noticed already on the little snowballs around your island, they'll push the snowballs and you'll have to sneak up and catch them while they're in the middle of rolling the ball. Uh, also, some of them, oh, hello, hi, Tamatoa. Tammy's here to say hi to you guys. 
He's a good lad, aren't you, Tam? Yes. What a good boy. You looking for dreamies? I have none. I purposely didn't bring any dreamies with me because I have a special guest right by the desk, which is why I don't want to attract too many of my feline friends. Anyways, going back to catching bugs, sometimes you will need to shake a tree or even hit a rock with the shovel. So do be mindful, not all bugs, they're not all just flying around, which is nice because it replicates, hello, it replicates um, in the real life where you can find them kind of their, you know, times of the day as well. Like the fish, when we looked at the fish, they really do replicate a lot of their life cycle, really, uh, life cycle, their daily life patterns. So what you can catch in January, in the Northern Hemisphere is quite limited. Obviously, it's wintertime, not particularly a good time to be a bug, per se, especially when you live here and it's freezing. So there are actually 20 different types of bugs, per se, available. And like I mentioned before, you can find them by hitting rocks. Hey, Alice. Hey, you just missed your boy, Tammy. He popped over to say hi. He's sitting on top of deck. Oh, Maui. No, you're not having dreamies. I say the word dreamies and they all magically start coming. Hi, did you want to come say hi to Alice? Come on. Come on, Mama. I don't have dreamies, so it's not going to happen. So with bugs, you can hit rock, shake trees, even dig. Fine for bugs. But one of my favorites is the the wharf roaches, which are hidden on the rocks by the ocean. And at first I was like, oh, what's that little scattering thing happening over there? And you do have to sneak up on them by pressing A and moving and go slowly and then release A when you're close enough to smack it down with your net and hopefully catch them and not smush them. Uh, there are a variety of cool nets. Speaking of Alice, who's joined, I got a cool star net on her island. So thanks for that. Um, I do often save up for when I go to my friends' islands that are well more advanced in gameplay than I am to get a really cool fishing rod or a really cool net that will last just that bit longer. So thanks for that star net, my friend. So that's in the Northern Hemisphere. There's only 20 types of bugs available to complete your museum. However, our friends in the Southern Hemisphere Gee golly, 61 different types of bugs. Now, there is one thing I should mention for our Southern Hemisphere friends. You probably want to catch the flying honeybee before the end of January because then they'll fly away. So that is the one species that will be leaving at the end of January for our friends in the Southern Hemisphere is the honeybee. So that was just a brief introduction into how to catch bugs. Again, welcome back to Shelby on Safari, where we look at animals in pulp culture. And tonight is again, the bug live stream of Animal Crossing. And as a new Animal Crossing player, I've had a lot of fun exploring, customizing the island. But as a wild animal biologist, the key thing driving me in this game right now is completing the museum. Therefore, over the past few weeks, we have looked at sea creatures, fishes, and now bugs. And if you are already subscribed to the channel, you'll know that I have a mini zoo of my own, many of which inhabitants are bugs. Invertebrates, to be precise. I have some sun beetles just, well, ooh, just behind me that way. Oh, that's not a sun beetle, that's a cat. Hi, Marvel. Nope, she's not going to... Oh, I think Starkey's down there playing. Anyway, so I have some beetles, but then I have someone else, a mysterious guest joining me on the desk right now, who you will meet later, so be sure to stick around. So now what we are going to do is look at five cool bugs that you can catch in Animal Crossings this January, at least in the Northern Hemisphere for right now. And it is so exciting, this first one, because I'm just going to say it. I had really no idea about damselflies versus butterflies. But that's why I love doing this channel because I get to look things up and get to learn a lot of cool things like the difference between which we'll get to in a moment. But the damselfly in Animal Crossing at the moment, they're pretty much all around. I see them all the time flittering about. And again, you just need to use your net swipe. Um, I don't actually think you have to sneak up on them. I haven't really, but let me know in the comments if you have scared them off and you think you need to sneak up on them. Um, I do frequently just run around on my island. Uh, so I do scare off some bugs like the dung beetles and the ones that hang out on the wood stumps. So I probably need to take a chill pill and walk around my island more. Hello, Rita Salia. Rita Salia. Rita, I'll call you Rita. Don't worry, friends. I know who Rita is. And um, I will I, henceforth be calling you. Excuse me. You are very misbehaved. Rita, could you tell your Starkey to behave, please? 
goodness gracious. They are being most mischievous. My cats do not like the rain. And today it's been really kind of wet and meh today. And so when they've gone out, it started to rain. And then they run back in the house and then get all grumpy. Um, which I would be too if I had fur and, you know, how to get it clean. But Starkey did that about five times today. It was really rather entertaining, bless her heart. So anyways, damselflies, they are insects in the suborder classification known as zygopateria, which means paired wings, which will give us a hint into one of the differences between them and dragonflies. But their fore wings and their hind wings are the same shape, which is pretty cool. So zygopateria. Pateria. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, but anyway, I say it with confidence and pff, works fine. Next is in the UK and Ireland, there are more than 20 different species of damselfly, which I thought was pretty interesting because I've never even thought to look at them in the real world here in the UK and especially this time of year. However, I'll put a link to a website that I was checking out earlier on about damselflies and dragonflies here in the UK for identification. And I was like, whoa. That is so cool. So many different kinds, so many beautiful colors as well. And in the game, you can see it's a beautiful blue color. And I, when I went to try to find out what species it was, a lot of them were blue. But we'll get to some of their different colors in just a second, because there's a cool study that I found that I want to share with you guys. However, uh, the species that's known in Animal Crossing is known as... Um, uh, a common damselfly, there we are, that's native to Africa, the Middle East, and parts of Asia. And, well, one of the reasons I, I really wanted to look at the damselfly is not just because it was always around my island. And I was like, okay, what is, hi, Maui, what is a damselfly? Maui found the special guest. Nope, no, no, don't say hi to the special guest just yet, Maui. One of the things that I really wanted to learn was the difference between damselflies and dragonflies. Hello, Ada. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, can you send some of the sun my way? Actually, no, because you're closer to Madrid. You guys had snow, didn't you? It was all over the news here, and I was super jealous because all I wanted to do is build a snowman. Um, Maui, come say hi to Ada. Come say hi. Ada is a dear family friend of ours, and she has a lot of mischievous cats as well. So you'll understand, Ada, why Maui is being a bit of a sinker, not saying hi to me right now. Do you Come on. He usually loves the camera. I apologize. He'll come when I'm in the middle of trying to explain what I've been trying to explain for the last two minutes. Uh, so the difference between dragonflies and damselflies is that the wings, when they're resting, dragonflies bring them in. Oh, I'm sorry. Dragonflies. Yeah. Dragonflies rest with their wings open. There we go. I got it. So dragonflies, when they're resting, when they've landed, their wings are open. However, the damselfly, when they rest, they bring their wings in which will help because then you'll be able to see a bit more of their body shape because dragonflies are a bit chunkier and shorter, whereas damselflies are a bit long and narrow. So when they bring their uh, wings in when they're resting, it's a nice narrow shape. Also, the eyes. If you happen to get close enough to the eyes of either a damselfly or a dragonfly, the dragonfly has a lot bigger eyes in comparison to the damselfly, and they're more closer together. Whereas the damselfly, they have a gap in between and compared to the dragonfly, a bit smaller. And I mentioned the wings, uh, given their subclass or suborder, sorry, classification, the name of it gave a hint as to their wing shape. Both damselflies, four wings and hind wings are the same shape and same size, whereas dragonflies have different shaped wings. The uh, four wings sometimes are bigger than the hind wings. So that's just a few of the differences between dragonflies and damselflies. And uh, <laughs> uh, you, I'm going to have to block some of you if you're being that cheeky, calling uh, another fellow friend uh, a damselfly. Well, actually, damselflies are quite nice. So Alice, uh, be, be mindful. They are. They come in a lot of colors which is a nice little segue into the study that was done on damselflies and dragonflies. And so with <laughs> damselflies, someone looked at the coloration between females before they were uh, ready to reproduce. And if when they were, you know, sexually mature, did their color change? And did that help with um, being harassed by pesky males or did not really help? Like, what, what was the deal? And they found that the female damselfly, before they were sexually mature, they were green in color. However, when they were ready to mate, it took about a week 
for them to change or wait for them to change color after they were sexually mature and then they would change to green. So this kind of visual cue, the author of the paper suggested that the red color was in fact likely to scare off males per se, to let them know, hey, she's not ready, you know, don't go after her, don't harass her, which is quite nice, um, because I bet that makes it a less stressful for the female. And then when the female does change color, it's like, hey, let's start a family. So yeah, I thought that was quite interesting, the color change from green to red based on that. And that was in the damselfly, which you can see flittering about quite frequently on your island in Animal Crossing. So if you're new and, ah, oh, what time of day can you catch a damselfly? I'm pretty sure you can catch it all day. Um, of course, that is the one animal that I didn't write notes in it. However, I do find a lot of insects, uh, as we'll see later on, there's certain times of the day uh, between like uh, 9 p.m. Let me scroll ahead. 11 p.m. to 4 p.m. is when you can find bugs. So I do wonder if maybe the damselfly is, but great question, Alice. With that in mind, I ha will have, um, when I'm done chattering away about bugs, in the description down below, I'll put a link to the Animal Crossing wiki that I use to look up information such as that and cheekily use to look up to try to hunt down the bugs to complete my museum as well. So definitely give that a look because it will give you all that other information. But apologies, I do not have that for you, my friend. But if you're new and you're just joining us, uh, my name's Shelby from Shelby on Safari, and I'm a wild animal biologist who looks at animals in pop culture. And over the past few weeks, I've been looking at Animal Crossing's New Horizon. And we've gone over how to catch bugs, what bugs you can catch. And right now we are diving a little bit deeper into really cool animals that you can find in Animal Crossing's and bring about some of the real world amazing things about them, more so than what Blathers does in his museum. Actually, show of hands for my friends in the chat room. Please let me know, do you accept when Blathers offers you to learn more about this species or do you say, no, I am busy? I would love to find out. And uh, yes, that'd be most curious. So let me know, let me know what you do. Do you choose to learn more or do you choose to keep planting pumpkins if you're Rita? Ah, Alice says, yes, she does. Ah, does Rita enjoy the white pumpkins? Oh wait, that's right, you haven't come over to get them yet. Don't worry, I have my game here. I'm not shaming you over YouTube. You must come get the pumpkins. Yeah, I got you white pumpkins, dude. Thanks Chaz, once again, Chaz the man, for not only my surfboard, but for cherries, and also uh, the white pumpkins. Now, yes, they're very good, Katie, yes. you. you it's always nice to learn a bit more. I mean, he doesn't go into too much detail, but just enough to pick one's interest and <laughs> Rita, oh, you prefer to read afterwards. Oh, and Ada, okay, you did, but not anymore. Fair enough, fair enough. Wait, read afterwards? Can you like go up to the animal in the museum and read more then? And is it the same blurb, I wonder? Or is it different? Or if you've chosen to learn more from Blathers at the time, does it then change to different details? Ooh, that'd be interesting. I'd like that. Uh, I was speaking with my mom actually the other day. Shout out to my mom because she got me Animal Crossings uh, <laughs> as well as somebody else for Christmas, which was really nice. But we were chatting Animal Crossing because my sister Jenna plays and she didn't quite understand why with Blathers you couldn't learn more. If you click to learn more, it could be like a bell making scheme. So like if you chose to, you'd be like, okay, learn more from Blathers and I'll get 10 extra bells or maybe a hundred because it make it a little bit more worth it. And I thought that was a really good idea because that would encourage people to read like Rita. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, you just want the white pumpkins. You don't fool me, Stare. Uh, Rita Salah. Um, so we are going over the animals in Animal Crossing. I'm getting distracted and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this next one because it has found rolling snowballs around your island and it will be leaving us in the northern hemisphere at the end of February, I believe, when winter disappears off our island and we head into spring, which is exciting because that's the next closest season to summer and super excited for that. It is the dung beetle, friends. Ah, the fabulous dung beetle. Hey, they get such a bad rap. I mean, bugs in general, usually people are like, ew, bugs. But dung beetle, because they have a gnarly job to do, they, you know, not too many people are impressed by them. However, hopefully by the end of this, if you are in that camp, you may change to be like, wow, that's a pretty cool bug. We need, a, we need, we do need them. Um, so like I said, dung beetles can be found on your island, rolling around snowballs, 
until the end of February. And I believe, Alice, uh, before you ask, you can find them all day. My sources do say you can find them all day. Now, there are about 8,000 different species of dung beetle, and they are found on all continents except for Antarctica. Now, when playing the game, I think, oh, a dung beetle. And I had no idea there was 8,000 different species because you see, you know, just dung beetle and like damselfly as well. We There's a variety of different species of dam damselfly, 20 here in the UK and Ireland alone. Um, so going that little extra step has been so much fun. However, there's some interesting things about the dung beetle rather than just 8,000 different species. But the diversity within that, as you can imagine, because they are found pretty much all over the world, except Antarctica, um, is that scientists have distinguished them into three different groups based on how they use their dung, essentially. Uh, not their dung, the dung of others, <laughs> which is even nicer. Uh, we have the rollers, the tunnelers, and the dwellers. So three different types of dung beetles is the easiest way to kind of classify the and how they use the dung. The lifespan or the um, life cycle from egg to adult depends on the species. And this can range anywhere to become a little egg to a full grown dung beetle adult could either take one month or even up to three years, which I was like, Ooh, that's a really long time. Um, and just a testimony to, you know, the craziness of invertebrates in general of just the sheer diversity of them in the animal kingdom. There's so many of them. And I'm just really amazed by some of these facts about the dung beetle because I've never really thought to look at them. And, you know, they came, oh, weren't they in a cameo? Oh God, what was the film? I really want to say it's Emperor's New Groove. And I'm pleased to say that I have some fellow Emperor News Groove uh, friends. Was that a dung beetle that was pushing? And then they zoomed into the castle when they were... Uh, making their way back to the castle, castle, you know, Cusco, Cusco land. Was it a dung beetle or was it just a fly? Or was it Lion King that had a dung beetle? I don't know, but they come up in pulp culture and you're like, ew, gross. They're rolling, you know, balls of feces. And I thought that was so clever with Animal Crossing making them roll balls of snow. Um, and dung beetles, they can move dung balls that are, that weigh up to 50 times the dung beetle's own weight. Talk about strength and Herculean. Ah, yes, Emperor's New Groove. Hi, Rose Sketch. Okay, I am so stoked that you said that because that is one of the most underloved movies I feel that Disney has done. And uh, a few of my friends can attest that we actually quote that movie in everyday life. And one of the few things. Oh, it's Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of like another amazing animal person, um, she does awesome animal sketches, which I'm so glad you say sketch in your YouTube profile. Be sure to check her out and check out her Instagram. She does beautiful drawings and uh, is an awesome person anyway. So, hey, Tally, we're just talking about dung beetles. So exciting. Um, and I'm so stoked that you do love Emperor's New Groove too. So I don't have to explain all the amazing quotes that are in that movie um, uh, about knitting. Oh no, he crochets. Oh God, the, and the wrong lever. Obviously the wrong lever one is used all the time. Um, but yeah, sharp rocks at the bottom, most likely. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> dung beetles. So dung beetles can move dung balls that weigh up to 50 times their own weight, which is just impressive. And I was going into just how funny that is with the creators of Animal Crossing, making them move the snowballs. And if any of you have a tip on the snowballs in general of how to get the perfect snowman, I tried it once and I didn't do it quite how you, I guess, the perfect snowman. I, I've only managed to do it one time after out of the 10 times that I've done it where he gave me the large snowflake. But if you have any tips, is it both of the balls of snow that you roll around have to be the same size? Does the head have to be smaller? As a Californian, I don't build snowman that much. In fact, I've only built once. And in fact, I think it was with um, Ada's friend uh, that I built the snowman here. Oh, hello, Tammy. Tammy's come up again. But please, if you have any tips, let me know. 
Yes, booyah, and spinach puffs as well. In fact, as we're all friends here, one of the adventures uh, that might be coming up in the far future, in a few years' time, is, you know, bringing a little friend into the world, Tammy. Um, and what are the sayings that I'm so excited about using is, no, no, allow me. When I bend down <laughs> to pick stuff up, I'm going to say that all the time. I show you. Okay, Tammy, there we go. Anyway, so, oh, the head has to be slightly smaller. Okay, so ever so slightly. Thank you, Alice, because I really want to get more um, large snowflakes to build beautiful walls and all the cool furniture that you can uh, during this wintry season of Animal Crossing. So once again, going back to our friends, the dung beetle. Well, now, I, I love talking about bugs, don't get me wrong, but I found out that burrowing owls have actually been seen using animal poop as bait to trap dung beetles. So then they can snack on them, which I thought, hey, that's pretty clever. Um, very clever of the burrowing elves to use that. Uh, I think that would be a rather stinky way to attract food. But uh, hey, if it works, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, Jiminy Crickets. Tally. Oh, you've given some really detailed information about snowman building. Head a smaller, get the body to max size. Ah, OK. And then I count to 17 seconds and somehow work. I'm going to have to give that a try. Thank you. Because, yeah, I feel really guilty when I make one that's not adequate. <laughs> they, like, tell me how, like, oh, well, I should thank you because you made me. And they give me so much shade. And I'm like, dude, I think you look pretty good for a snowman. But anyways, uh, <laughs> once again, the dung beetle, as the name suggests, obviously, they use dung. However, it's not quite the dung itself that they eat. Um, they look out, you know, for the manure of herbivores. Um, and I'll give an example using the domestic cow species later on. But the reason is, is because their dung has half digested grass and also kind of, you know, some gross liquid kind of mixed in with it. And it's this liquid that they eat. It's not actually, you know, the dung, dungy bit itself. And uh, however, I will say that not all dung beetles are the same. Uh, I found out that one species of dung beetle, well, they're native to Peru. Speaking of Emperor's New Groove, great tie in there. Thanks, guys. Uh, they actually eat millipedes, which is probably something I shouldn't have said too loud as to give a hint to the friend that's on the table joining me later on. But yeah, it, what a crazy, crazy little species that is that eats millipedes. So going back to the poo, of course, that was just one example of a dung beetle. Um, the dung beetle has a very important role of recycling. Now, it's not everybody's favorite thing, you know, dealing with poo. But the dung beetles, like I said, they don't really eat the poo. They have a little liquid that's inside um, the dung itself, which is typically what they eat. Now, one study found that the average domestic cow drops 10 to 12 dung pats per day. Oh, spoilers, uh, or not spoilers, but warning in case you haven't eaten dinner yet. Uh, it might be a little bit poopy for a while. Uh, so the <laughs> average domestic cow drops about 10 to 12 uh, dung pats per day. And each of these pats alone can produce up to 3,000 flies within two weeks. So quite a lot of flies. Actually, flies, by the way, are another animal that you can catch in Animal Crossing. I had no idea you can do that. So I just need to get some trash on my island uh, and leave it to attract the flies. But anyways, 3,000 flies can be attracted just to one dung pile within two weeks. So that would be quite messy. And in parts of Texas, where, of course, domestic cows, you know, are out on the range, per se, well, the dung beetle plays a very important role. And in fact, the dung beetle can bury about 80% of the cattle dung. So it's super important for the ecosystem, you know, of parts of Texas where the domestic cow are and the dung beetle to help kind of clean up that part of the world. If they didn't do this, the manure would uh, harden, you know, plants would die. It would just be really stinky everywhere, you know, really gross. So the dung beetle does in fact play a very important role, which I feel a, quite a few insect species and bugs do in fact, you know, play as recyclers and they get a bad rep because maybe the stuff they're doing isn't the best or some species like cockroaches, you know, very few species of cockroach out of all of the species are actually pests, considered pests, but the rest of them, you know, they just hang out, they do their thing, they recycle. So yes, ooh, Ada's also given bottom snowball should be maximum size, head slightly smaller. You can do the biggest ball and then they can roll on the snow path. Oh, ooh, stone path. Oh, Ada, you, oh, that is fabulous. I don't have a stone path yet, but one day I will. And that is really nifty. Oh, 
man, you guys are expert snowman builder. Way to go. Oh, that's excellent. I'm going to go around building snowmen. Although I do find one time I accidentally like knocked it into the river because I was like trying to go around a tree and I got really sad because I couldn't find another snowball to like build on the other bigger ball that I had made. And it was really sad because I was kind of like halfway there and I was almost tempted just to chuck the other one in the river as well to join it. But anyways, so if you're new and you're joining us, uh, welcome back to Shelby on Safari. I'm a wild animal biologist that has a zoo of her own, as you can probably might see by some of my animals, not Bulbasaur, but some of my friends in the background. And we are looking at some of the bugs that you can catch in Animal Crossing's New Horizons this January in the Northern Hemisphere, to be precise, because our friends in the South, uh, well, you got a lot more species, 61 species compared to our 20 at the moment. So we've just gone over the beautiful damselfly as well as the impressive dung beetle. And now we're moving on to a really interesting creature that has many different names. Now, I call these guys roly polies. I also have found them by the name of pill log, pill, pill bug, wood louse, a variety of different names. However, these little friends known as pill bugs in Animal Crossings can be found in... Um, between September to June and between the hours of 11 p.m. and 4 p.m. by hitting rocks with a shovel. Cheese log. That sounds like a food. Oh, God. What's the... Oh. There is a dish here um, in Britain where, where it's like a roll... Oh, 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 oh. And it's like... It's not in the refrigerated second section, but I feel it should because it's like cake and it has like frosting in the inside. And I like really got freaked out the first time I saw it because I was like, "Ooh, that should be like refrigerated. But then I realized it shouldn't. Does anyone know what that one is? Because when you say cheese log, that makes me think of like that dish, but like a big log of cheese. Yeah, Swiss roll, Swiss roll. That's exactly what it is. Thanks, Tally. Um, <laughs> yeah, like Swiss roll. I, oh my gosh, yeah. That's, that was the connection I made. And I haven't had dessert yet. So maybe that's why my brain immediately jumped to Swiss roll and things such as that. Um, in fact, my tongue is burnt because I realized I was so far behind with dinner tonight that I like really quickly ate a stuffed crust pizza, like straight out of the oven, which I should have let it cool. But like, you know, when you talk and you can feel it hitting like the back of your teeth, the little burnt part. Oh my gosh. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to drink out of my really cool uh, sketch cup of raccoons. Hmm. It's spongy with the jammy center. I swore there was like a white frosting bit. Maybe it depends on the Swiss roll or how it's done. And then it, is it always like strawberry jam or is it mixed up? Like I really like Victoria sponge cake, but with raspberry jam. But I know that's controversial because I think traditionally it's strawberry. I know, really controversial topics here on Shelby on Safari. Um, and it all started with the cheese log and the pill bug, which is one of the animals that you can find in Animal Crossing's New Horizon. And I said you can find them by hitting rocks with a shovel, which I thought was rather entertaining. Um, and so I also found out that they go by many, many other names, including slaters and doodle bugs. Uh, but there's actually 4,000 different species of woodlouse. So once again, showing us just how much diversity there is within invertebrates. And my goodness, you know, the dung beetles alone having thousands of different species and dragonflies. It's just so impressive. Now, the crazy thing that I find about pill bugs is that they aren't actually bugs. Ooh, I know. Talk about controversial again, guys. It is hot, hot seat tonight, man. I know. Ooh, I don't know what it is, but definitely want some. Ah, you'll just have to come over eventually, Ada, um, and have some Swiss roll. But I assure you, we'll, we'll make you different different things. I believe James will make his um, a certain cake that uh, our friend liked as well. Was it coffee cake? Was it coffee cake? I think it was coffee cake. I know, bombshell, right, Rita? Yes, I know the pill bugs aren't really bugs. Now, they are in the subphylum Crustacea. So any guesses as to uh, what they are? Crustaceans, that's right. Uh, it's in the name. So they are actually more related, more closely related to like shrimps or crayfish than any other insect, like any insect. So they're not really bugs. They're more crustaceans, which is crazy. They even have gills, but that's a whole other thing for another, another uh, discussion because I want to talk about their blood. 
That's right. So they have he hem- he I'm going to say it wrong. Hemocyanin in their blood, which is a bit different from us because we have hemoglobin in our blood. So we have iron. Um, but hemocyanin actually has copper ions in it. So when their blood is oxygenated, they have blue blood. Ooh, I know. Super spooky, right? Blue blood. That is crazy to me about pill bugs. Uh, I, I feel like we should really call them, not like I'm completely biased because I've always called them roly polies, but I feel roly polies makes more sense since they aren't bugs. Um, they're more crustaceans. I don't know which, which you think. Um, are they royal? Royal? What do you, oh, what? Ah, oh, hello, Fan City Central. Um, speaking of pulp culture references, uh, she is a fellow Gryffindor. So I know some of you are in different houses, but that's okay. We are welcome to all houses of, Her- of Harry Potter and Hogwarts here. But actually, Ada, what house are you in? I'm, I'm curious to find. Blue blood. Oh, are they royal? Oh, I get you. Yeah, whoo, went over my head. Speaking of uh, Hogwarts, Alice has a Harry Potter trivia, um, trivial pursuit game, uh, Fan City. And I don't know if you have that. I hope you do. It's a really fun trivial pursuit game. And you'd probably smash it because they ask questions, you know, generic ones. But also some of the spell questions I find are particularly difficult, but also really exciting. So, oh, yeah, represent the Ravenclaw. You would be a Ravenclaw. Tally, what house are you in, if you're still on? Um, and Ada, of course. Oh, the brownie recipe. That's right, Ada. It was the brownie recipe. Ravenclaw. Ah, uh, very good, very good. Well, at least I have another uh, Gryffindor here. Hello, Fan City. So, pill bugs or roly polies or woodlows are actually crustaceans, as we saw. So, they do, in fact, have blue blood. I don't know if that makes them royal, but let's go with it because they are royally awesome. Oh, yeah, I went there. And so, as crustaceans, they are actually the only crustacean, as you can imagine, that has kind of widely colonized the land because we find them, uh, you know, all around here but they still do need some water kind of humidity kind of in their environment because they pretty much are a fish out of water, which is quite interesting. Now, pill bugs, when they're first born, they aren't quite complete. They have only six pairs of legs. However, after their first molt, they will get their seventh pair of legs. Now, molting is a very fun process, and it's one that I like talking about. Um, and in fact, I've done a video on, oh my gosh, help, why is my cockroach white? Which, spoilers, it's because they're molting. However, I was really surprised to find out that lately the YouTube algorithm has like shown it to a bunch of people, and someone commented on it. <laughs> they were like, ew, why does somebody keep bugs? Why would they keep them as pets? That's kind of what they said, but I wanted to say it in that accent. And I just laughed because I was like, well, apparently I keep them as pets because they do make really interesting pets. But if you want to check out that video and learn more about the molting process, be sure to check out the links in the description down below if I remember, which I hope I do. So pill bugs, one last thing about them, uh, just if, if they weren't mind blowing enough because they actually are bugs, they're crustaceans, is that they can survive in contaminated soil. Now, when I say contaminated soil, I mean contaminated because somehow they can take in copper, they can take in zinc, they can take in lead and even arsenic. And these will then be crystallized in their midgut and they can just thrive and survive in these environments that not many other friends can. And so even though the soil is contaminated with arsenic, no big deal for the little pill bug or wood mouse or roly poly. Now, um, we are moving on to the centipede. Ooh, hemocyanin in their blood. Yes. Oh, oh, good. I'm glad, Fan City, you have the um, Harry Potter Trivial Pursuit. That's fabulous because, yes, it's been a lot of fun and controversial. Uh, yes, they build the copper for their blood. Yes, Rita. Oh, add is the Slytherin. Oh, more Slytherins. Oh, well, at least we have some diversity within this chat, although not Hufflepuff, although Starkey. Oh, wait, there's Starkey. There's Starkey. Hi. Starkey's in Hufflepuff. So we are fully representing Hogwarts at this time, which is fabulous. Well, was I boring you? Tammy just had a big yawn. Anyways, Tammy says hi. So I wanted to talk about the centipede. Um, and if you're new here, I'm Shelby. We do videos on animals and pop culture and all sorts of stuff. And if you haven't guessed already, we're looking at bugs and animal crime.
crossings, New Horizons, which is really exciting. And we've looked at the damselfly, the pill bug, all sorts of amazing animals. And last but not least, we are looking at the centipede. Well, actually not last, because I have a friend here with me on the desk, uh, which I'll introduce you after we talk about the centipede. Um, and also, before I forget, if you want to learn more about animals in the wild and pop culture and various other things, be sure to join the safari by clicking subscribe. And thank you if you have already, because dudes, we are over 300 subscribers, which is crazy and mind blowing and just really fun because I love making these videos and researching two things that I really love and having an excuse to play Animal Crossing or read really cool studies on animals like damselflies changing colors. Now, centipede Ooh, i know i know i had a, i had to throw it a spooky animal here for sure because in the northern hemisphere friends you can find them september to june from 4 p.m to 11 p.m so in the southern hemisphere it's a little bit different obviously because seasonality you can find them from march to december now the species in animal crossing new horizon is known as the japanese centipede or mukade which I'm pretty sure I said wrong once again, but mukade is how it looks like it said. Now, the mukade has quite an interesting folklore story. And again, shout out to my fun series that I did during Halloween where I looked at spooky animals and the folklore behind them and, you know, the really bad reputation. But why maybe do they have that? Um, well, the mukade certainly has an interesting reputation. So like I said, they're found in Japan. And the centipede itself... Is, is actually quite big. They're one of the largest species of centipede. They can get up to 20 centimeters in length. So quite impressive. And they are carnivorous. They will eat insects. They will eat lizards. They will eat frogs and even rodents, little mice. So these guys definitely um, are interesting to observe. That is for sure. My goodness. They are beautiful in color. Don't get me wrong. And if, if you're online, which I assume you are, if you can pull up, you know, safari, Google the Japanese centipede and just look at their colors bigger because obviously when you play Animal Crossing, you see them and they're quite tiny, especially when you find them, you know, by hitting on rocks or, you know, things such as that. It, it, it's just stunning, their colors. Um, now, I want to get more into, oh, wait, I should mention that the bite, apparently, uh, the bite of one of these guys, one of the Japanese centipedes or mukade, is 10 times worse than a bee sting. I'm not quite sure who, who, how they came to that number, but either way, it does sound a little bit terrifying and not necessarily an animal that I probably want to handle. Okay, spoilers, Rita. You took, you took my thunder. You took my thunder. What would Thor say? Um, <laughs> is for a hundred legs. Uh, it, I will show that. Yes. Oh, that is right, Fan City. Yeah, the bright colors do warm predators like, whoa, don't get near me, which is funny because some animals actually have those colors because they are venomous or dangerous and others are kind of little imposters and they, you know, have the bright colors, but hmm, they're not actually poisonous. So very, very, very well spotted there. Yes, <laughs> you did remember that right. And yes, as Rita has pointed out, the omukade is a giant man-eating centipede that lives in the mountains. Oh yeah. Now, the one story I found did tell this crazy tale of uh, the omukade living in the mountains above this village and causing trouble for not just the townspeople, but dragons that lived at the town. And the omukade would come and even like snatch the baby dragons and things such as that. It was pretty intense. And it, it must be for dragons, you know, an, a creature that we find, you know, so mythical and powerful, and bold and brave and all sorts of amazing things to be fearful of this omakade just was like, ooh, that's interesting. And this brave hero heard of this uh, omakade and he came to the local village and he helped the dragons out and the villagers by slaying this beast. And the dragons rewarded him with uh, prosperity for not just him, but then his future children and for generations. And I think they said that... Um, in this one particular version that I read that I'll put in the description down below, he became the Shogun and all sorts of crazy stuff. But I was like, whoa, could you imagine? And like the artwork as well, they, it showed a little imagery of a mountain, a beautiful, you know, beautiful mountain, beautiful village. And then this giant centipede <laughs> was bigger than the houses. I was like, wow, that is terrifying, right? 
So that is wrapping up the, some of the animals that you can meet in Animal Crossing's New Horizons this January, which leads me to one of my friends, which if you are subscribed to the channel and have checked out, um, I have a playlist called Intriguing Invertebrates. And as a wild animal biologist, uh, I have a few friends of my own. And, uh, well, I like to raise awareness about some lesser known species, which I do in my weird and wonderful playlist by introducing people to say the ptarmigan, which I knew my friend Alice didn't quite know about, which was quite exciting. I love hearing um, when people learn about animals that they had no idea existed, because that is the whole point of the channel is to inspire and get everyone to stay curious, but also to raise awareness of just how cool some species are that have a bad reputation, like my friend Millie here. Now we just talked about centipedes and um, <laughs> the terrifying of the omukade. And don't you fret friends, uh, my little friend here is a giant African millipede. And you can learn more about them in my video down below on giant African millipedes. But yes, her legs. Now, oh, there we go, we can see. So we're going to talk through some of the differences between millipedes and centipedes. And as my friend um, Rita has mentioned out, you know, the legs, it's all about the legs. And so uh, oddly enough, uh, even though the name centipede and millipede suggest how many legs our friends have, it's not quite that simple. So depending on the species, one of the ways that you can tell the difference between millipedes and centipedes is, well, you know, centipede, well, I, I said that wrong. One of the differences between millipedes and centipedes is the legs. And with that in mind, you got to keep the species of centipede in mind because some centipedes, oh, I'll show you. There we go. Some centipedes can have 30 legs, which not quite impressive, right? That's all right, 30 legs. But some can have up to 354 legs. That is insane. That's a lot of shoes, right? So that is centipedes. This is a millipede. Now, millipedes have a variety of number of legs as well, depending on a species. But a giant, typical giant African millipede, like my friend here, has about 256 legs. Now, I'm not going to go through and count. I mean, you guys can try, but she is on a mission just moving and grooving right now which hopefully you can see because I just find how they move their legs so fascinating. Um, but another difference between millipedes and centipedes is the body segments. So centipedes have one set of legs per body segment where uh, my friend here has two. And if you can see, uh, it's a little bit harder to tell with a live millipede. Um, but she has two legs per segment. Uh, well, per most segment, um, when you get towards the middle uh, back of her body, she'll have, just have one leg. But most segments of these guys have two legs. Now, of course, the reason why I'm so calm is not only uh, is because my friend here is actually a friend and I know she's not going to harm me, but also the venom. Like we mentioned, centipedes. Well, they're quite uh, quite gnarly, <laughs> as we saw some like the some species uh, are you know centipedes are carnivorous and come on, don't roll up in a ball yet. We'll get to why she's doing that soon. But uh, many centipede species are in fact venomous. However, I should mention that not every centipede species is venomous, uh, but most are. Now, millipedes, like my buddy here, is not venomous. She has a different strategy of protecting. Now, um, Fan City did mention earlier on about the colors, about how, you know, the color often gives an illusion like, hey, I'm dangerous. And so with my little millipede here, you can see she's brown and not quite as stark as, you know, say the red of the centipede and such as that. So her defensive strategy, which she might do now because I picked her up my hand, is roll into a little ball. Now ah, she's more curious. So she <laughs> just rolls up into a little ball and looks like poop. And uh, it could be because she looks like poop that, you know, predators don't snack on her or she's just more harder. I mean, she does have an exoskeleton. Um, it's not terribly hard, but it's certainly hard enough to kind of keep everything together. Um, and as I'm stroking her, I wish you guys could like stroke her because she's so it feels so trippy. Um, you can see her body segments and it does feel like rigid, like whoop, 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 whoop. it's so cool. 
Um, and I am ticklish. And so I'm trying not to have her uh, walk too much because it does, in fact, tickle. It doesn't hurt at all, um, which is nice. It just feels, you know, like little, little prickles, but it is fun. Hello, you're gorgeous. And also the head and the antennae give a hint. You can see she's, if she's going to cooperate, it kind of curves down where centipedes are a bit more kind of flat and their antennae go out to the side. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but unfortunately I don't have a centipede. Shh, don't let my husband hear this. <laughs> unfortunately, I don't have a centipede um, to hold side by side in comparison to. But another big difference between centipedes and millipedes is of course the diet. Centipedes are carnivores, whereas my friend here, she is a detritivore, which is not only a fun word to say, but a fun one to spell, and also means something really cool. She eats organic, um, well, decaying organic matter. And actually some of her favorite snacks might be some of yours, like cucumber, apples, oranges, um, we give her a variety of fruits to mix things up. Lately, I got some kiwis because they were on offer at Sainsbury's. And it turns out that she and uh, some of the uh, jeweled beetles that we have, that little African green beetles that you might see in one of my unboxing videos, they love cucumber, but also kiwi, which has been quite fun. Um, keeping animals in captivity, uh, I try to replicate, you know, the natural environment as much as possible. And so, you know, having soil, I brought her up in um, some moist soil here, but also, you know, have living plants in their enclosure, but rotate their food as well, because not everything, it's not the same thing every time when you're out in the wild. And so just like how we would, you know, with tigers and some of the larger animals in captivity, trying to mimic that but also for the invertebrates as well. I think it's really important and uh, keeping it nice and humid as well. And there for her giving her a nice little spray cause she'll eat the, she'll drink the water. Hello. Oh, someone just cried, sorry. Um, she'll have the water kind of off the fruit as well. I'm glad you find her absolutely adorable. I do too. She is so Maui, they're so naughty. Um, I find her absolutely fascinating to watch in the legs. And I had a lot of fun filming with my macro lens, which I think I might do another video on uh, giant African millipedes, just because watching the legs is absolutely fascinating. And again, completely harmless. She she doesn't hurt. I mean, she will, and when she's curled up in a ball, she could excrete, um, you know, a little uh, substance that just says, you know, back off, but it doesn't irritate my skin, at least it may irritate some. But um, as I said, her legs, definitely not, you know, clinchy at all. It's just a little slight tickle, but definitely I've never been bitten before by them. Um, it's centipedes who have like the stronger jaw because obviously they're carnivores. So they need, you know, a bit more manpower to break through. <laughs> Whereas eating organic decaying matter, such as, you know, fruit and other things, you don't really need that strong of jaw, um, which is though mindful how I cut it, because obviously breaking through like the tough exterior of like an orange peel or something, I am mindful of how I cut my fruit um, and present it to them. And so that way she can get the most of it. Huh, did you want to say hi? But yeah, so that are some of just some of the species that you can meet in Animal Crossing's New Horizons, some of the fun bugs that you can catch using your net rather sneaking up on them or hitting some rocks with a shovel. But the animals that you can find in New, um, New Horizons are just fantastic. And I can't wait to continue playing the game and just seeing, you know, when the seasons change, seeing as I just got my game at Christmas, seeing what fun animals come in the spring and the summer, hopefully some stick insects because I have quite a few of those and I'd love to introduce you guys to them as well on live stream, of course, because I've done a few videos on those friends, which you can check out in my intriguing invertebrates video. But I would like to remind you guys because this Friday, which is when my new regular videos come out, I will be showcasing some of my favorite bamboo gardens. And some of you fine folks have shared with me your bamboo gardens on Animal Crossing's New Horizons. Yes, I can't wait to see your island as well, Tally. But I would love to see just a screenshot of your bamboo garden, whether that be in real life, if you don't have Animal Crossing, or if you do have the game, tag me at Shelby on Safari, which is my Instagram handle as well. Be sure to follow me there because you'll see a lot more behind the scenes photos, if you will. I'm not just my cats, I swear, but also some walks. I've been going on a lot of woodland walks and all sorts of stuff. I try to make it really engaging and ask, you know, questions for tonight, for tonight's Instagram. I haven't actually checked. I've been really bad. Um, I should probably do that to see if anyone asked any questions. But also, you know, just interact with me. And 
also tag me in your bamboozled photos because bamboozled is my little friendly competition just to get inspiration as I am new to the game and seeing all of your amazing islands and what you've done. I thought, why not look at bamboo because I like bamboo. And yeah, so be sure to use the hashtag bamboozled, which is really fun. And with that, my friends, if there are any questions, I'll quickly check the Instagram and let you check out my little friend here. Um, ooh, here's one. Um, why did you want to work with animals? Well, <laughs> that's a very broad question, my friend, but uh, an important one nonetheless. And I don't really know. I've always loved animals. I know that sounds so cliche in saying it sounds cliche, sounds cliche, um, but it, it genuinely is. I was fascinated from a young age. I can't even remember not being fascinated by the cheetah. It's always been my favorite animal um, and it forever will be, uh, except for you, Maui, of course. Um, I had to say that. Uh, but yeah, the cheetah is my favorite animal. And that's always been driving my passion of working with wildlife. I've had the pleasure of working with both um, animals in the wild, but also in captivity at some of the best zoos in the world, like the San Diego Zoo, but also doing uh, rehabilitation care uh, back home in California, working with pelicans and squirrels even. Uh, uh, by the way, Squirrel Appreciation Day is coming up and that's why you need to follow on Shelby on Safari on Instagram because we're gonna go out and find some squirrels <laughs> and appreciate them. But that the journey just to continuously learn more, I guess, and um, animals, there's so much to learn, but also so much to share. Like, you know, the amazingness that is millipedes. I know bugs aren't for everybody and, you know, that's okay, but still being able to appreciate, whoa, what they do is super important, you know, as a tritivore, just like, you know, the dung beetles being recyclers and taking care of the stuff that nobody wants to, um, you know, helping break down organic matter or like vultures as well, the, the bad reputation that sometimes they get, just sharing how amazing they are and finding the amazing stories that are out there with some really interesting scientific studies that are going on and highlighting that, uh, I guess, just being introduced to that world and going, wow, there's so much cool stuff to share. And I think that's why um, I decided I wanted to work with animals and just kind of share that passion with the YouTube channel, because I found, you know, that there was a need for that. And so I thought, why not combine it with animals and pop culture as well? Because that is one of my favorite things. And to be able to reach a different audience and make that connection, like with my Pokemon videos as well, which I've seen um, quite a few people react to of going, wow, I never thought of that, just makes me so happy because the Pokemon world's super cool, but the animal world is like amazing as well. And so doing those pop culture comparison videos uh, is pretty fun. And yeah, well, with that, I'm going to put my friend back in because she uh, is going to go have some dinner of some nice kiwi. And I'm going to go find myself a dessert, maybe not a Swiss roll. I don't think we have one in the house, but I, I will try one later. And I want to thank you guys all from Rita to Alice to Ada to Fan City to Tally for joining me. Um, I really appreciate it. And it's been so fun interacting with you guys. I love doing these live streams because I get to chat with you and uh, just have some fun and learn how to build proper snowmen. And with that, uh, be sure to subscribe so you can be up to date whenever I do another live stream. I don't have another one planned. However, I will be on furlough soon. And so therefore I may have extra time and I'd love to just chat with you. Also, I am on the Clubhouse app. If you are on there as well, follow me at Shelby on Safari. I will be trying out a few different rooms and just generally chatting animal chat over the next few days. I think I have one set aside for tomorrow, but then also one next Friday. So be sure to follow me there at Shelby on Safari too. And with that, friends, Maui, myself, and the rest of us say adios, good night, and I will see you on Friday for Friday's new video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Have a good night. Say bye, Mary. Bye. I'm trying to speak on behalf. Bye.